this first problem. Okay, what you first, what you need to do is find the inverse to start with. So I'm going to exchange my x and y. So I get x equals 8 minus y squared. Okay, and then I solve for the new y. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Notice I have this negative, so I'm going to uh, divide both sides by a negative. And I'm just going to reorder my terms. I'm going to get 8 minus x is equal to y squared. Again, I, what I did is I changed the sign of every term and reordered the ones on the left. I then extract my square root. And so this would be my solution, square root of 8 minus x. And if you are looking to sketch this, the way that I would sketch these, and these are the ones with the um, negatives in that are inside our function. Those, these are the horizontal the, the reflections across the y-axis, which is a little bit harder. The rules, sometimes if students don't write the rules out um, correctly, they might misinterpret them. So the easiest thing to do is to use the same rules which I try to instill, which is the starting point is going to be the value of x that gives you a 0 inside the function. So what value of x would give you a 0 here? Eight. So I know that I'm starting at this point 8. So my origin point moves to 8. Okay, and then because it's a negative in front, I am going to reflect it. But rather than thinking of reflections and transformations, when there's a negative in front, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out which tool in, uh, indicates my parent function. So a square root is going to look like which one? So this is my square root parent function, right? My toolkit function. Okay, and so I know I'm going to have that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find one other point that is easy to solve for, meaning it gives me an integer value. So if I used 0 here, 0 doesn't give me an integer value, right? The square root of 8 is not an integer value. So what I want to do is I want to pick a number that I can plug in for x that's going to give me an integer value here. So what if I, if I wanted this to be the square root of 1, what number would I use? 8 minus what equals 1? So what I could do is I could use this toolkit function or this function here, and then I could just plot the point right there, and then it's going to take care of the rest for me, right? You just need two points, and it'll uh, figure out the line for you. So if you just do that, you're good. Now that's not the only way that you can do it. What if you want not square root of one, but what if you want square root of four, the next number that you can find uh, roots easily? So what number could x be to get you the square root of four inside here? Four, so at four, square root of four is two. So what you could do is you could take this as your graph, and it will take care of itself for you as well. So whatever it is that you choose, just find one other point. Okay? As long as you have two points on these uh, types of function sketches, uh, it will uh, figure out the rest for you. Okay? So the second example, same idea here. If you want to first find the inverse, I'm going to exchange my x and y. So I get uh, x is equal to negative 5 y squared. I'm going to divide by a negative 5 and then extract my square root. So that is my solution. I can leave it just as it is. Okay, uh, for the most part, you'll put negative signs in the numerator. So I have negative x uh, over 5 all inside a square root. It should still register as correct if you put grouping symbols around the denominator. Okay, and then once again I look for my parent function. It's a square root. So here is the tool that I'm going to use. And then I find my origin point. So uh, is there any shifting that's going on in here? No vertical shift, no horizontal shift. So my, my origin point stays right where it is. And you can test that right. Negative 0 divided by 5 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. And then the next thing is pick a point. Okay, so we want to pick a point that's going to give us uh, an easy to use number. Well, if I pick the, the first square root that's easiest to evaluate is square root 1. So what number can I plug in for x so that I get a whole value of 1 inside this radical? Negative 5, right? So minus a minus 5 gives me positive 5 over 5 is 1. So at negative 5, my corresponding output is the square root of 1, which is 1. So when I set my uh, toolkit to graph this, I'm going to plot those two points, and it will complete the, the rest of the graph for you.